Hey YouTube, so it's at my gardener, and today we're outside finally, and I have a really exciting episode for you guys today. So I'm going to be doing a test with uh, just called pushing the limits gardening or no limits gardening, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, I have yet to decide on the title, so obviously if you're watching this video, I've decided on the title. It'll either be no limits gardening or uh, like extreme gardening or something, uh, but. It's February, for all of you that uh, don't live in Michigan or don't look at your calendar. It's, uh, it's pretty cold still, and um, basically what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be planting spinach. Now spinach is one of those just super crops, I don't know what it is about it, but it can grow in about 26 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and uh, that it, it basically kind of goes dormant around that temperature, um, but anything over that it can grow. Uh, and normally everything freezes around then. So uh, what I've done is I've constructed behind me a little kind of mini hoop house. Um, and uh, it was free. I made a lot of free stuff, obviously, because I'm not going to go out and buy stuff just to try something that might not work. But um, I'm fairly confident that it'll work. Um, and I'll kind of get into some steps and I'll show you what's kind of been going on. And uh, I'll show you how to plant and stuff. Um, so if you want to try this and it works for me, well, then uh, you can definitely try it. And uh, it'll pop probably work for you, too. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through the mechanics with it as well. So one of the things that makes me think it'll work is number one, it's a raised bed. Uh, and raised beds tend to heat up faster because they ha they're an elevated surface. And that also protects them against frost and heavy frosts because uh, the frost settles on the lowest part of the ground. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but I can still see my breath pretty well. So it's pretty cold. It's about 40 degrees, I'd say. And the average lows are about 32. Um, and there's going to be some 20 high 20 degree days so i'm fairly confident that i can still grow this but uh what i have set up is basically a mini hoop house like i said and that's going to keep the greenhouse effect active um somewhat during the night uh because it brings in light it magnifies the light and kind of bounces it around in there and it'll heat it up pretty fast as you might have seen in a greenhouse if you've ever been in one um but uh also another thing that I have going for me is I put straw down last fall to kind of do some uh, insulating and stuff on my tomatoes, uh, but since I don't have tomatoes in there right now, since it's so cold that obviously nothing would grow, uh, I have the straw still in there from last year that still works as a good insulator. And so I'm just going to part that and plant in between it to uh, just kind of protect the roots a little bit more as an, an additional insulator. Um, so I'm going to get started, I'll show you kind of how to do it, so if you want to try it, go right ahead. I think it'll be fun. All right, so as you can see right here, I've simply taken some of those, uh, they're the, I don't know, I don't know exactly know what they are, but I think they're, they're either metal or fiberglass. Um, and they are the, they're the little, uh, st uh, stakes that you stick up for when the snow plows come that you can mark where your, your driveway is. And I've simply taken them and just bent them into the ground. Um, and the edges of the, the raised bed are keeping them in this, in this, shape here which worked really great and it's free and then I'm just gonna take uh, the straw and I'm just gonna simply part it um, I'm gonna make a little furrow here and you generally want to plant spinach about an inch and a half deep uh, generally no more than two times the diameter of the seed is what they say so I got my furrow there. And I'll be planting Bloomsdale Long Standing Spinach. Uh, it's a pretty hardy variety. It's one of the more common varieties that you'll get, but it's an heirloom as well. So if it happens to go to seed uh, sometime in the in the near future or whatever, I'll, I'll save seeds and I'll get to grow them next year, which is nice about growing heirlooms. And so I'm just going to disperse them. Uh, not, I'm not too worried about spacing right now. If I need to, I'll, I can thin them. But uh, you know, they're they're fairly uh, they're fairly hardy plants. So I'm just going to put the spinach in there, and then I'm just going to cover them up with a light layering of soil. And all this soil is already thawed out while everything else is still frozen. So you know it's at least working somehow. 
Um, I don't know how in 26 degree weather, but, but it is. So I'm gonna start making my other furrows and I'll show you what it's like when I get done. So I'm all finished and as you can see behind me, all the furrows are clearly defined in the, uh, I, where I separated the hay. And uh, just as a, another thought, um, you know, it's really, now that I'm thinking about it, it's really not that bad of an idea because either way I realize you're gonna get stuff because when cool crops overwinter, they're, they're naturally intended to overwinter and so they'll be the first thing to sprout in the springtime. Um, <clears throat> You know, and so basically either I'm gonna get really lucky and I'm gonna get fresh greens that are healthy and, and nutritious, or I'm gonna, or I'm just gonna get them in the springtime when it warms up. And so you guys can either choose to follow me or procrastinate and, uh, and follow what the, the, uh, the know-it-alls and the hotheads have to say about planting, uh, or, you can, or you can try to just push the limits because um, you never know unless you try. And that's, that's what's so cool about this, is the fact that I did it with a cool other crop. So either way, it's gonna be a win-win situation. It'll just overwinter and sprout in the springtime. And uh, I'll know not to plant it so early, but it's not gonna hurt the seeds whatsoever because why do you think, why do you think things sprout in the springtime? And you, you don't take weed seeds indoors for the winter. Uh, they stay in the ground the whole time and they do just fine. It's the way nature intended them. Uh, so, you know, don't don't worry about it. Give it a try if you like, if you got the space, got the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll try to keep you updated on this. I had a little uh, problem in the tomato room that you guys probably already know about. If, if not, um, uh, I just had a, uh, well, I had a small blight problem uh, from, from the dirt that I was using. And I won't get into it because it, it really, uh, it flustered me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, uh, but but it's all okay. I got it all under, I got it all under control, uh, and it's, it's doing okay now. Uh, I just thought it'd be a cool change to show you something different, and then maybe in a couple days I'll show you the tomato room again. I just didn't want to do the same stuff over and over and over again because it it gets boring, and uh, not only is it boring for you, but it's boring for me. I like change, and I like uh, I like tossing some new stuff in there to kind of keep you guys excited and getting ready for the growing season. So. Uh, it should be fun. It should be a great year. And uh, hey, remember to grow big or go home. <laughs> See ya. Bye.